Daniel chapter 6, verse 8. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing. No prayer, no asking petition. But it may not change. According to the law of the Medes and Persians, which alter not. Wherefore, King Dyer signed the writing and the decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, his windows being opened in his chambers toward Jerusalem. He knelt upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as he did before time. Then the men assembled and found Daniel praying, making supplications before his God. They came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. As thou not signed the decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within thirty days save thee, O king, shall be cast in the den of lions? And the king answered and said, This thing is true, according to the law of the Medes, which alters not. Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed. But make his petitions three times a day. And the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself, and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. He labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men assembled unto the king and said, King, no, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is no decree nor statute which the king established may be changed. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of the lions. Okay, Daniel's a child of God. The law was signed. Daniel violated the law, and he ended up dead of the lines, just like the law said. So, what we're going to bring up in Daniel today is when can a Christian break the law? Can a Christian break the law? Daniel broke the law. Now, Daniel wasn't a Christian, but he was a child of God, and he went to the lions then. He didn't call no lawyers. He didn't get no attorneys. He did not sign petitions. He did not block the streets. He went into his house behind his closed doors, knelt towards Jerusalem, and prayed like he always did. They caught him. They arrested him or, or put him in some kind of <clears throat> hold on him and cast him into the den of lawn. Yeah, well, you know. You... Okay, let's see what the Bible has to say. Romans chapter 13. Can we break the law? Romans 13, let every soul, saved or lost, be subject in the higher powers, president, house, congress, judges, police, senate, mayors, governors, your boss, your mom and dad, <clears throat> but there is no power but of God and the powers that be ordained of God so whoever the powers be whatever however you feel God put those powers in it and if it's ordained by the devil God allows Satan to do it that's that's it you don't like who's in charge you don't like that God did it you take it up with God that's not what we're talking about I'm not gonna waste our time today whether so therefore resists the power you break the law Resists the ordinance of God. So when you break the law, you're breaking God's law. God's ordinance of the church. We're not under law, but God's ordinance is you obey and be subject to the higher powers. That's to every soul, Christian and non-Christian. They that resist, those that break the law, those that fight, shall receive to themselves damnation. What about a Christian? You don't, you don't go to hell, but you'll lose rewards. You'll end up in jail. you dead, houseless, no money. For the rulers are not a terror to good works. As far as me, with the, I don't care about the police. As far as they come driving up on my road, I have no problem. I have not done anything wrong. But to the evil. The one who's going to get scared when the cops drive down the road or the cops are approaching the person is 
the one who's breaking the law, one who's guilty. Well, they'll not be afraid of the power. We are, oh, I have no fear. You're supposed to fear those in charge that God put in charge. That's an ordinance of God to obey the higher power. Well, they're not Christian. They're not, you know, scripture. They're not, but I don't care. God didn't put no loophole. God didn't call a lawyer to, all right, masterify Romans 13, find which way you can get. Do that which is good. Now shall have praise of the saints. People enjoy those who do good. For he is a minister of God to, the, to thee for good. That's the power. Whoever the power is, it's above your head. They are a minister. The President of the United States is a minister. That police officer that pulls you over is a minister of God. But if thou do that which is evil, you're going to break the law, be afraid. For he bears not the sword in vain. And the sword, that's capital punishment. That judge should not feel any guilty if you break the speed limit to give you that $100 fine. You deserved it. You ain't got the money. That's your problem. And don't go praying for God for the money to pay for the ticket that you violated the law. A little persecution, no. For he's a minister of God. To, re to, to the revenger to execute, look at that word, wrath upon him that doeth good. I mean, doeth evil. Good, you know, that's for the world today. So for a Christian and for the unsaved, Paul says, obey the power. If you don't like the powers, that's your tough luck. Obey them. Paul did not give us anything about how you feel or your opinion. I don't think that, I don't care what you think. We're not asking your personal opinion. You take your opinion and go put some right guard on it. Paul says, obey the government. And Paul is right in under Nero. I guarantee you will be able to say some things about Nero, Nero a Christian killer. Okay? Now, Obey the power. So Daniel was wrong. Or was it? Acts 4. Acts chapter 4, verse 18. Now John and Peter have been arrested. They're out in front of the temple. They're preaching. They're street preaching. And they're, they're teaching and preaching to people. They've been arrested. They've been called before the authority. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God, to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. Now look, Peter didn't cock an attitude. Peter respectfully says, listen, sir, let me ask you a question. Am I to obey God or am I to obey you? What did Paul say? Both. But we have a contradiction. Between man and God. Because contradiction is. Look at chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Verse 8. Look what Jesus said. Red, if you got a red letter Bible. But ye shall have power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem. That's where they are. In Judea. In Samaria. And other parts of the world. Jesus said in, in Mark 16, go in the world and preach to, 
preach the gospel. In Acts chapter 4, verse 18, they say not to teach the name of Jesus. That violates what Jesus, Jesus said preach the gospel. You can't preach the gospel without mentioning the name of Jesus. Jesus said you're to be a witness to me in, in Jerusalem. This is where they are in Jerusalem. You can't be a witness of Jesus without mentioning the name of Jesus. So we have a conflict between God and man. And remember, this is a religious people. Telling Peter and, and John. And they respectfully, they didn't block the robes. They didn't go with their camel having a big flag, F Biden. That's not my president. I'm not going to take the shot. They said, do we obey God or do we obey you? Paul said, obey the powers that be. Speeding is proper for the government to get you. It's a violation of the law. Being caught in someone's house when you've not been invited is trespass. You find that in the law. There used to be a crime in, in America way back when. If you were caught with, with a, another man's wife, that was a crime. Not today. They do it on television. But that was a crime. Rape is a crime. There were even laws. They're, they're still on the books, by the way. Many of them. There are laws in places where I came from Connecticut and here in Daytona Beach. It is illegal to spit on the sidewalk. Though they don't obey it, if a cop sees you spit on the sidewalk in Daytona Beach or where we come from in Connecticut, he has the right to give you, well, that's an old, outdated law. It's okay. It's on the books. <laughs> what was Daniel's case? The king wrote a law and he couldn't change it. You know, you're not supposed to talk on the cell phone. Well, no, no one ever gets caught. But Christian, if you get caught, oh, nobody else. If you get caught, maybe the devil went up to God, Job 1 and 2, and said, hey, look at that guy. He thinks he's so great. He said, All right, well, I'll watch this, Mr. Satan. <laughs> Caught you on the phone. Well, look at everybody else. I don't care. You got caught. What's the law say? Don't talk on the phone while driving. We got bike week right now. And there are signs that go up in Daytona Beach, believe it or not. Please ride quietly. They're not doing that. And if that police officer came up to you, you got your bike, burp, burp, and he gives you a ticket. What's the problem? Uh, we got signs that just something quiet. Well, my bike, uh, Mr. Christian. You mean these, these, these Christian bikers associate, they get a ticket for, for having a loud bike, and that's the law. It's on the record. Believe it or not, Daytona Beach, there's a law for indecency. In the law books, if you see a part of a woman's body, it's, it's described almost measurements. If you violate that law, you can get a ticket or get arrested or whatever. Well, be a Christian woman violates that law, but... So Peter and John are faced with an issue. We're going to obey God. We're going to obey Paul. Uh, uh, excuse me, the people. Now Paul had not written Romans thirteen yet. Okay, uh, Acts chapter five. He said, "Well, that went away." Acts chapter five, verse twenty-five. And this is a kind of All right, five nine Peter. He's arrested for preaching and teaching Jesus. Five twenty five. Then came one and told him, "Say, behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple, teaching the people." Uh oh, 
Well, why did he say in chapter 4? They're violating the law. They went to the captain with the, with the officers and brought them without violence. You see that? Peter and John didn't kick and scream. They didn't park their camels to block the road. When you see a man of God in the Bible, Old Testament or New Testament, when something's going to, persecution is going to happen, it does not affect other people in their lives. There are people with that trucker's strike. They could not get to work. It's illegal to do what you've done. I've seen even Christians, and I've seen Christian pastors on Facebook, oh, the freedom fire. None of you doing rebellion. All that tea that was thrown overboard with the Boston Tea Party, that was illegal. You know what our founding fathers said when we fought England? They said one of two things. If we win, we're going to establish a country. If we lose, England is going to consider us as traitors and we're going to lose our next. You know, you're following and following. They had the attitude. We're either going to win or we're going to lose. So here they are. They're preaching. They were told not to preach. Verse 26, then went the captain of the officers and brought them without violence. For they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council or court. And the high, and the high priest asked them, said, did, we not, did, did not we straightly command you, command ye, you should not teach in the name, this name? Yes, he did. I read it to you, chapter 4. Knows how they didn't mention Jesus. Behold, ye are you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. Good, amen. Churches ain't doing that today. They tend to bring this man's blood upon us. They wouldn't say Jesus. And Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. So verse 40. And to him they agreed when they had called the apostles, they bring him back in and beat them. And commanded they should not name, speak in the name of Jesus, there's the name, and let them go. Daniel broke the law and ended up in the lion's den. Peter and John and the other apostles were told not to preach and teach the name of Jesus. They're naming and preaching the name of Jesus and teaching. They are in court again, and they are beaten. And Peter said, we ought to obey God more than man. Paul said, obey the powers that be. And there was no ruckus. There was no violence. I could imagine, and you know, Peter was headstrong. Peter was that man. He stuck it out all the time. Yeah, he's the one that whipped the sword out and cut the guy's ear off. I can imagine Peter said, oh, no, put the handcuffs on. Let's go. No, we don't need a handcuff. Oh, you sure? Okay. Come on, John. We have an issue here. Second Chronicles. Now this is where you have got to Second Chronicles six. The Bible says in only one Bible. Second Chronicles six twenty. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. This is where you got to know your Bible. You know, we built that ark over there. In New Testament book, chapter and verse, please. Well, we wanted the people, Hebrews 11, faith is the substance of things not seen, evidence of things not seen. And I forget, I blew that verse, sorry. You know, I haven't seen it, but I hope you took the faith away from the people. 
I wonder how much ruckus they ran into. Oh, we want to build this ark. Well, you can't begin. Now. We're gonna. We want to build it. Where does it say in the, in the New Testament? Where does it say for us to build an ark? I guarantee they, if they had trouble, I don't know if they did. I don't really care. But if they called lawyers and that, they wasted money. Nowhere is a Christian told to go build an ark. We're told to go in all the world and preach. So look at Second Chronicles six twenty. Now this is Solomon. He's praying. And thy eyes, God's eyes, may be open unto this house day and night. Well, that house is gone now for Daniel. Upon the place where thou hast said that thou wouldest put thy name there, the temple of Jerusalem, to hearken unto prayer which thy servant prayeth towards this place. That's Daniel. Prayeth towards this place. You notice how it doesn't say house? Because when Daniel does, there is no house. There are Jews today that will pray towards Jerusalem. There's no house. So God, the Holy Spirit, allows for Solomon to say, Lord, if they pray towards this house, please, if they pray towards this place, please hear them and listen. Daniel has a charge by God, you pray. Peter and John, the apostles, said, you go into Jerusalem, never mind Samaria, and the but you go and you be a testimony and go in the world and preach the gospel. Paul says, obey the powers that be. But when you got a contradiction where the where somebody, your employer or the government says, opposite of what the Bible. Uh, here's another one. Uh, Acts, uh, not uh, Exodus. This just came to mind. Thank you, Lord. Exodus, believe, chapter 1. Look at this one. Exodus 1, 16. When you do the office of midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon their stools, if it be a son, thou shalt kill him. What does God say about killing? Thou shalt not kill. Verse 17. But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded. They disobeyed the government. Look at verse 21. And it came to pass because the midwives feared God. Didn't we see that? You're to fear the government and you're to fear God. That's throughout the scripture. That he made them houses. Wait a minute. God blessed women who broke the law. God is going to bless Daniel who broke the law. Didn't Shadrach, Meshach, Indigo, did they not break the law? They did not bow down before that silver or that gold image. And they were cast into the fiery furnace. And Jesus showed up. Unless you have a modern Bible. But we're not talking about that. I was going to say Daniel. Shadrach, Meshach, Indigo disobeyed the government and Jesus showed up. Daniel disobeyed the government and God shut the mouth of the lions. The... The midwives disobeyed the government, and God gave them houses. Now, don't apply that to the church age today. I'm, I'm, I'm going to believe God He's going to give me a house. That'd be some kind of prosperity gospel nonsense. Peter and John and the apostles were told not to preach Jesus. And they preached Jesus, and look at their lives through the book of Acts. Peter and John have books that they authored. John has given us the great book of Revelation that matches to Daniel. Paul says we're going to obey the powers that be. What's going on? Okay. Here's what's going on. I know a church who went out street preaching in a, in a city where we, used to, where we used to live. And there was a flagpole. And the flagpole is right in the middle of the street. It's it kind of like, it's like, a, it's like a, a, a triangular. It has you know three ways to go in, three ways to go out. Right in the middle, there was a flagpole. And they were preaching there. And the cops came along and said, no, no, you got to go. Oh, no, 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 we got rights, we got rights. And they went back and preached, and they were arrested. Come to find out that that flagpole was private property. 
you did wrong. Now, we've had the issue here. We don't do the ministry here in Daytona Beach anymore, but we've had the issue where the cops were called. You're not supposed to be here. The Constitution gives us the right to the sidewalk. We were allowed to use the sidewalks, and we used the sidewalks according to the law. We were even allowed to use the road, which they did not like, because it was our rights. Now, I have been in the grocery store, I'm not going to mention Walmart or anything. My son has been, cannot go back into the Walmart store in Groton, Connecticut, because he was passing out gospel tracts. Now, they didn't say, don't do it, they said, don't come back here. And I said, well, we're not going to come back. We'll take our business elsewhere. Now, we've had places where we've been where they said, you know, you can't do that here. We've had the mall. We can, you can't do that. All right? We're not going to do it. I've had many instances, employer, government, you can't do that here. Well, let me go talk to my lawyer. My lawyer says I can do it. I'll be back. My lawyer says I can't do it. I apologize. I'm sorry. I stepped out of line. And I have been called faithful and true by the Daytona Police Department lawyer. They said, hey, that guy is respectful. I didn't scream and holler and cuss and, and spit up and, and, and call down lightning and fire. <laughs> unless, you want to call, unless you want to teach people perverted Bibles. Now, we got a thing today. we got these, these freedom truckers. There's no one in the Bible that fights for freedom. And there's no one under God that violates the law without adhering to the Scriptures. Esther's people were going to be put on the chopping block. They were going to be exterminated by Haman. And rightfully and properly, she got permission from, the, from the, her husband, the king, for the Jews to protect themselves. And there are areas in this world today, China, Russia, guaranteed Korea, there are Christians there. They're about the work of God, but they cannot do, they do not have the liberties we have in America. And when it comes down to, <clears throat> can I break the law, being a Christian, you can break the law if it, something that God said to do, that man says not to do, but you're not to be a jerk. Now, if I go on any sidewalk in Daytona Beach, the police know right, I've got that right. But if I step into a business without permission, if I step on someone's property without permission, and I start preaching, or I start giving out gospel tracts, they can arrest me. And they would have full right, and I would be fully wrong. You can't be a jerk. You're not going to go in the streets of Korea and stand up with the Bible in your hand and start proclaiming the gospel. You're not going to be living too long. Everything has to be smugged in. Everything has to be underground church. Well, COVID-19, no, well, well, who said in the Bible that Christians were supposed to have big church houses? Where the Bible stately clarifies to us, through even the Apostle Paul, churches were in their house. <laughs> well, you know, we, we're six feet apart. Okay, they say six feet apart. We got too many people in our living room. We got to have another church so we can have more people. Oh, no, we got to have a big church. All right, shut your doors. And many are not open. There are Christians today. I don't have a job. I'm not making no money. Well, why not? What happened? I'm not taking the vaccine. That's your stupidity. He's not my. Yes, he is. Show me a book a chapter and a verse where it says not to take a vaccine. Freedom. Oh, yeah, we got it all messed up for freedom. 
We got a freedom today. We can take our money and we can buy gasoline and we can drive around on our motorcycles. We can do 500 laps of the Daytona 500. We can do 400 laps of the Coca-Cola. We can have the 24-hour race over here at Daytona Beach. And we can have our trucks and our Jeeps. Oh, but COVID-15, or I just don't feel well, we don't use our gas to go to church. There's a family that, for whatever reason, they can't make it to church, and they stay home. Nobody will pick them up. And then you wonder, oh, four dollars a gallon of gas. Yeah. And the grocery stores are getting hit because we spend more money for pet food than we do for God and missionaries. Now all of a sudden, all the world is, all oh, the Ukraine, the Ukraine, the Ukraine. And how many missionaries have you prayed? How many missionaries have you supported? All for freedom. Find me one freedom fighter in the Bible. There, there is a religion, oh, we can't join the military because the Bible says thou shalt not kill. What do you do with the orders that God gave Joshua and Moses? Go out there and wipe them out. What do you do with those orders? And see, and then we turn around, oh, we've been persecuted. Uh, we've been persecuted. Have you been persecuted by the Bible? Or you've been persecuted because you're an idiot? Big difference. I had one time, we used to have a ministry at the courthouse in, in Norwich, where we used to live. We were out there, we were out there many years. And I thought one time, you know what, I'll be an idiot. They had the cameras there, and I'd hold up a sign. i hold up my daughter, she had a sign. And, go, and my, my father-in-law told me, they actually saw her H on the, on the television with a sign. Well, that caused a ruckus. The next thing you know, you had the U.S. Marshals escort us off the property. And told us not to come back. Well, I went and contacted my lawyers. And, I said, yeah. and they said in 1960-something, there was a law. You know, he said when all those those hippies and all that was going on. I said, oh, yeah. He said they passed a the law. The courthouses and including the Supreme Court, you cannot go up to the Supreme Court and hold up signs or preach. It's, it's against the law. Now, if I or somebody else went to Washington, D.C., and if I stood on the, on the Supreme Court stairs and I started preaching the gospel and I was arrested, that's my fault. Whereas I could stand over by the White House and I don't know where, but you got that gate and you see people and it was on you know the movies and all that. You, you see, you could stand right there and I've seen Christians with signs and preaching. I, why, why go where it's illegal where you can go where Hey, I'm right in front of the White House, holding the sign with Jesus, preaching. That looked good for the video. And let me tell you, when we when we gave in, found out, okay, we were illegal at the courthouse. I go, okay, God, I'm sorry, we were wrong. God gave us two great ministries, and then He gave us a third great ministry. We had a ministry downtown Norwich. We had a ministry at the NFA, and we had a ministry in Ockham. You know what Ockham is? Ockham was named for a Christian Indian that got saved, that went over to England, learned the Bible, came back over here and witnessed and had a life among the Indians for Jesus Christ. And I can say, Ockham. And there are Christians out there. What's Ockham? Mm -hmm. There are Christians today who have been in trouble with the law because their violation of the law was not biblical. And pretty much the one that is biblical, like Peter and John, they're going to, okay, let's do this respectfully. Let's do this quietly. We don't need to make a run. I mean, me, what I do is, I, like I said, I already told the cops, and the cops knew it. They told the police. What I'll do is I'll go home. Right. I had one instance where my lawyer was on the phone with a police officer. My lawyer's like, you want to go to jail? When you end up there, you call me, I'll get you out. That cop said, I'm going to arrest you. If he doesn't leave, he's going to jail. Signed, sealed, and delivered. And I told my lawyer, and I told the officer, I said, I'm going to go. <coughs> I'm going to let my lawyer do what the lawyers do. And the next week, I was back. We were there for six years. 
And that is respect by the police officer. When you act like an idiot, you're not going to get a respect. Listen, President Biden will probably go to hell because he won't listen to a Christian witness to him about Jesus because you other idiots out there in the name of Christianity aren't jackasses. I wouldn't blame that man not getting saved. Listen to your testimony. You see, we wrap ourselves in the Bible, we wrap ourselves in a rebel flag, we wrap ourselves in gun, we wrap ourselves in anything but God. And we may have the guns, Bible, and whatever, but the very last thing is the Bible. Because I've even heard Christians when I tell them about Romans 13, oh, that's a dreidel. That's not a fight. Our soldiers gave us freedom. We got that freedom came from God. And he's going to take it away from you because you ain't giving God the credit. It's going to get worse. Show me where the midwives in Exodus raise up a ruckus. Show me where Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego raised up a ruckus. Show me where Daniel went sissy fitting and crying and boohooing and see where James and John called lawyers. John is on the island of Platinum. Oh, I guess it's for the word of God. I well, we don't know what you're going to do, God, but do what you. All right, I'll give you the book of Revelation. Cool. I'll tell you something else the churches don't like paying your taxes. I believe, honestly believe, I believe every single church should pay taxes. You should not be taxes in. Oh, that's anti-American. Peter, yes, Jesus. Who pays the taxes? What's well, coming? I'll tell you what. Go down there. Go 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 catch a fish. You take that coin. You pay your taxes. What do you do with that? Well, you know, you see, we're exempt because we're in religion. The only resent I see from paying taxes is back when Pharaoh had, <coughs> had his priest in Egypt under Joseph. That's the only tax exemption I've seen. Jesus said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, render unto God what is God's. That's Romans 13. If it belongs to the government, give it to the government. That clues the laws. If it belongs to God, give it to God. Well, if the government interferes with, with God, you got to do what, the, what God says to do. I'm not done. And also, there were 12 disciples. One of them was a devil, and the, one of the others was a tax collector. In order to call Mary and Joseph to go to where Jesus was supposed to be born according to the scriptures, Jesus told the Roman government, taxation. The Roman government said, going to tax you. Get to the place where, you, where your family is in, in Jerusalem and in Judah and Israel, and we're going to tax you. And Joseph said, honey, get on the donkey. Let's go. They didn't have no tea parties. They didn't have no wine parties. They had no revolt. They did what the government told them to do. And the government gladly supported them to say, any children about two years old will kill them. And God protected them. Now, well, you know, I did what the government, I did what God told me, the government punished me. Well, you see, you want the houses by the Hebrew midwife. Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo got the fiery furnace. Daniel got the lion's den. Peter and John got whipped. Now back to uh, chapter five, Acts, Acts chapter 5. Sometime to do right with God... You gotta take a beating by man. But it better be a rightful beating. It better be a correct beating. Because you better not be taking a beating by the government and you get to the judgment seat of Christ, all right for my rewards. You wait for what? You were stupid. 
Here, here's a King James Bible. You won't tell me where to find what you did. Stupid. But if you do right, so they were beaten. Verse forty, verse forty-one, and they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and every house cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Why? Jesus said, teach. Jesus said, preach. But our behinds, our back got whipped. Remember a man named Paul? Remember a man named uh, John? Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Remember Daniel? Sometimes to live right for God in this world that is crazy and with wickedness and sin, you got to take a beating for God to be blessed by God. But you better make sure that when you take a beating by God, it is right in Scripture. Or you're an idiot. And there are plenty of idiots out there. And I've heard, I've, I've seen videos where they're arresting, they're persecuted, and no, you weren't. You're just being a jerk. And I've seen where Christians doing the service of God, they were, they were arrested, they were, and they were arrested according to the government, but in order by God, God would be pleased. And the price of gasoline, and not to get it, to get the shot, and all that—that's not worthy. That doesn't count nothing to Jesus Christ. You are counted as a rebel. Rebels don't get re rewarded. It's that plain and simple. So can I break the law? You better know your scripture. You better know what's right and what's wrong. You better know what is godly and what is ungodly. Don't go out there, I'm gonna I'm gonna suffer for Jesus, and you don't even read your Bible. It's that simple. When you go out and put gospel tracts on cars, windshields, in a mall, on a private property. And they call you up and they want you to come and get them all back. It's your fault, not theirs. And you must go and pick them all back up. And if you don't, okay, you rebelled against God. And be sure to know that your sin will find you out. And the Bible includes rebelling as the sin of witchcraft. We live in the lie of the same church age. The rights of the people and the problem with the rights of the people the poop with the Bible. I want to do what I want. They wrap themselves up in the flag, but they don't wrap themselves up in the King James Bible. 